Hello. Now today's talk is in continuation of yesterday's talk. We were discussing finasteride yesterday and whether you should take finasteride or not. And today we're going to talk about dutasteride and how dutasteride compares with finasteride. And today I'm also going to discuss with you the dosage of finasteride and the dosage of dutasteride and how they compare. In the end, I will go through the dosage that I recommend for my patients. The link for yesterday's talk is in the description below and you can see it if you want to reference to yesterday's talk. I keep receiving so many emails from my patients regarding what is the dosage, whether they should take dutasteride or finasteride. And the mails are so many that I decided that I must publish this video. And since because of the COVID closed down, I have all the time to do it. So here I'm presenting to you whatever knowledge that I have. Though many patients today are advocates of finasteride and some are advocates of dutasteride, there is a second category of patients who are a little cautious. They do not want to use a blowtorch to extinguish a candle. Finasteride, which is also referred to as Proscar or Propecia, and Dutasteride, which comes under the trade name of Avodart, are the most commonly used DHT blockers, which are used in hair loss today. Both of them are 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. So therefore, the testosterone levels in the body increase, whereas the DHT levels decrease. There is a fine difference between the mechanism of action of Finasteride on one hand and Dutasteride on the other. Whereas Finasteride inhibits type 2 5 alpha reductase, Dutasteride inhibits all three isozymes that is type 1, type 2, and type 3. So, in so doing, it reduces the amount of DHT much more than Finasteride does. But on the downside, you have more side effects from Dutasteride than from Finasteride. Finasteride was originally discovered as a drug to treat benign prostatic hyperplasia, that is prostatic disorders, in 1976. It was only in 1992 that it was its use started in hair loss patients. But it was only as laid back as in 1997 that it was FDA approved as an accepted therapy for hair loss patients. The approval of dutasteride for benign prostatic hypertrophy followed the same route. Dutasteride was FDA approved for prostatic disorders in 2001. But till now, it has not been able to get FDA approval for its use in hair loss medicine. It is very likely that it will never get in the near future. Why? Because with so many lawsuits against Merck, that's makers of Propecia, Glasgow SmithKline, the makers of Avodart, that is Dutasteride, are cautious now to get this approval. FDA will think twice before recommending another hair loss medication after so many court cases, 1,100 against Merck, the makers of Propecia. So it is not likely in the near future that Dutasteride is going to get FDA approval. However, it has got government sanction in countries like Japan and Korea. Not having FDA approval does not mean that dutasteride is not effective in hair loss. There are so many papers today on the use of finasteride and dutasteride in treating hair loss that one, it leaves one confused. So at the end, it is only the experience, the anecdotal evidence, the experience in a clinical setting, what the doctor has to feel, a doctor who has been practicing hair restoration surgery and who has been prescribing dutasteride and finasteride for a long time and a patient who has been taking these medicines, these people count more than any scientific study. The field of dosaging is equally confusing. Why? Because patients have been experimenting with various com combinations and permutations. And over a period of time, there are certain laid down dosage combinations, which are nowhere in clinical trial, which never have been studied in a paper, uh, which have been established by hearsay, so to say, in the mind of hair loss sufferers. It is very interesting that many clinics also follow certain dosage regimes which are not corroborated by any study as such. This is very interesting how crowd behavior has evolved the use of dutasteride and finasteride over a period of time. Patients interact with one another and there are so many media on which they interact, social platforms, one-to-one -one basis through their doctors and this has evolved a very peculiar strategy to handle hair loss and the dosages of Finasteride and Dutasteride are equally very quaint. We need to note here that every patient is different. Every patient has different metabolism. Everybody does not have the same risk tolerance. People have different mental robustness. And this is very important to understand because for compliance is very crucial. To many patients I have observed 90% maintenance of hair and some amount of regrowth with 5% chances of side effects is more acceptable than just 70% of maintenance of hair and regrowth and 1% side effects. And the reverse is also true. 
So everybody is made up differently. Everybody has different risk tolerance. And so every medicine, every regime that we make for a patient is tailor cut to that patient's requirement and that patient's risk tolerance and how the particular drug is having an effect on him. One dosage for every patient will not work. It has never worked till now. And there is a majority of patients who don't even look towards statistics. For them, the word of the doctor is enough. And these are the patients who are the happiest amongst all these people. There are many people who are taking Proscar, taking the five milligram tablet, cutting it into four pieces and using them. When you cut a tablet, there's breakage of the cut margin and powder formation. Some amount of uh, the tablet is lost. So people think that they are making 1.25 milligram pieces, but they're actually not like that. One day they will be taking 1.25 milligram, the other day they're taking one milligram, and some other days they are taking 1.5 milligram as well. So there is a wide variation when you cut a tablet, a five milligram tablet into four pieces. Now how this started? When Propecia came into the market, it was exorbitantly priced because the company had rights to this medicine and nobody else could make the generic forms for five years. After five years, a lot of generic formulations came into the market and the costing of finasteride reduced to a great extent. But still there is a category which cannot afford Propecia and still divides five milligram Proscar into four parts and uses it. With this considerable variation of uh, dosage of 1.25 milligram of Proscar, there was considerable variation, but there are some patients who have reported that they do better with this variation on a daily basis than if they took one milligram tablet every day. So this is just an anecdotal incident and there is no research that has gone into it. Neither is a paper being published. There is another subset of patients who takes these medicines on alternate days. There's another one who splits the tablet into half the one milligram tablet into half and takes 0.5 milligram tablets every day. There are others also who have discovered that their hair is maintained even if they take one tablet every third or fourth day. Important points to note about dutasteride and finasteride are number one, that finasteride blocks 70% of the DHT whereas dutasteride blocks 94% of the DHT on a milligram to milligram basis. So it is evident that dutasteride promotes more hair growth. Also, dutasteride has a longer half-life of four to five months as compared to that of finasteride, which is only five to six hours. This is very important. Side effects. Whereas in the case of finasteride, 1.9% of the patients complain of decreased libido and 1.3% of the patients complain of erectile dysfunction. 1.2% patients complain of decreased ejaculate. Now in the case of dutasteride, this is much higher. So while taking finasteride, a lot of papers have proved that it is a safe drug. The side effects are rare. They are transient. That is, they disappear after you discontinue the drugs. All the papers also prove that the drug dutasteride on double brine trial, on self-assessment and on clinical observations provides more hair thickness after evaluating global photographs. So in my experience of using uh, finasteride alone, I have seen that most patients, when they take it for a prolonged time, after two to five years, it is variable. The effects of finasteride start to wane away. And this is when I discovered that a combination of rutasteride with finasteride, both these drugs, when used together, they complement one another and enhance the effect of each other. The, the medicine rutasteride has been in vogue only for the last 10 to 15 years. And more so, it has been popular only in the last about five years or seven years, I would say. So this period of time in the history of a drug is not a time period in which you can assess the long-term side effect that you can get by constant long-term use of a medicine. Finasteride has been in the market for a long time and there's a long history of its use. So we feel that it is a safer drug and it's safer to recommend to the patient and a patient in the long term may not have significant side effects. Therefore, this is the reason why some head doctors like me too, are hesitant in prescribing dutasteride to their patient. It is always better to err on the side of caution than to be sorry. So studies can be very confusing. There is one study of uh, 1999 which confuses the maximum. This study concludes that finasteride is almost as effective at 0.05 milligram per day dosage as it is at 1 milligram per day or 5 milligram per day when it comes to scalp skin DHT levels and 0.2 milligram per day is almost as effective as one milligram per day or five milligram per day when it comes to serum DHT levels. Now this study is not helpful at all. And there is a host of studies which are so confusing 
And therefore, patients who are on finasteride, they don't know what to do. At the end of the day, after they search and search and search the internet, they get a headache. So that is where the doctor has to step in and advise a treatment plan best suited to the needs of the patient and the safety of the patient. Now, what time should finasteride? or dutasteride be taken. Now, as far as dutasteride is concerned, it has a long half-life. You can take it any time of the day, but finasteride should be only taken at night before dinner. Why? Because the peak testosterone level in the body happens at 1 a.m. This is the circadian rhythm. And since the half-life of finasteride is only six to eight hours or even lesser, so it may not cover that period when the peak of testosterone takes place. If we are taking the drug in the morning. Another fact about finasteride versus dutasteride that you should know is that finasteride increases the testosterone levels by only 15% whereas in the case of dutasteride it is much more. So when testosterone levels go up, estradiol levels also go up by 15%. Increase of testosterone levels by 15% is not very alarming as it is we take testosterone supplementation after the age of 50. But complete research has not been done to establish that use of finasteride for increased testosterone levels is beneficial for supplementation and can be used in place of testosterone supplementation. Many patients also ask since testosterone levels have gone up, will it boost my athletic performance? Will it boost my muscle building? No, it is not so because it also increases the level of estradiol in your body. So to have the benefits of muscle mass increase or the other added benefits of testosterone, you also have to have and estradiol inhibit. So some patients know this and the doctors advise them to take Arimidex. Arimidex is a drug which decreases the level of estradiol in the body and if you are an athlete it improves your muscle mass because the estradiol level is decreased. But if you have to take it you have to consult an endocrinologist or your physician before embarking on this journey. So the recommended dose at my clinic is starting one milligram finasteride immediately after the hair transplant once the five day medicines of antibiotics etc are over and this one milligram finasteride is taken every day for a duration of six months which is mandatory. Beyond this period it is up to the patient in consultation with me if he wants to continue for his native thinning hair. Dutasteride in my clinic is used very sparingly but I have had good results in patients who take one milligram tablet of finasteride every day but once a week they omit that dose and take 0.5 milligram of dutasteride. This is a combination which is increasingly uh, proving beneficial to me. Till now on one hand 3 million people have taken finasteride so we are fully aware of the side effects the possible side effects that finasteride has given to some patients. Whereas in the case of dutasteride not more than 100,000 patients have been on dutasteride. So to evaluate the possibility of long-term side effects is a little bit difficult in the case of dutasteride. So based on many studies and anecdotal evidence, it is guaranteed that dutasteride will cause better hair growth. On the other hand, it is also true that it has higher rate of side effects than a proven drug, which is finasteride or propitia. Thank you very much for watching.